everyone, it's Tara with Sweet Country Glam and I am super excited. We are going to put our four cup turner into good use. We're gonna be making some epoxy tumblers. So let's get started and let's get creative. All right, so here is my custom order logo that I've been working on now. They originally had a different font and it was a broken font. So it was gonna have a lot of pieces cut out and a lot of pieces missing and it was gonna be horrendous to weed, let me tell you. So I went in and found something very similar, but a solid font that was still legible and looked really nice with the rest of the logo. And it was called Marker Felt. So I went ahead and I inserted that in there and welded everything together. And you can see their dimensions are almost about 5.3 by a 2.693. And this actually turned out to be the perfect size for these tumblers. Loving this carbon fiber from JDC. I have the door open in my shop, so I have some good ventilation. I do wanna share with you, I am using the Hippie Crafter Epoxy Resin. And this has just been by far one of the best epoxies that I've used. It's really important, make sure you do use painter's tape. I like the blue tape to go on the insides of my cup, especially if I'm going all the way up to the rim. And then this is a heat gun. My husband's popping bubbles for me Why I switch out gloves and go outside and get the next mug prepped. All right, so I just wanted to show off my mica powders from Hippie Crafter. It is the same epoxy company for their epoxy resin. And I wanted to use this silk white just because it had a nice little shimmer. Now what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be going over my tumbler that I already painted a canvas white, but I wanted to add a little bit of a pearl to its base for the look that I'm going for. So you I love this pearl color. I'm big just on pearls as it is. All right, now this is ready. Came out beautiful. And my custom orders came out amazing. Love them. Have a few more to do. All right, so now I'm cleaning this off. This has been curing for over a day now. Let's go over to design space and let me show you my images I'm gonna put on it. Now, I also made two strips for each side. These are gonna be in that really pretty copper metallic. And you can go in and see my dimensions right along the sides here. We got our width and we got our length. Here's the sizes for the mama. Almost eight inches in length and about 2.2 and a quarter in the width. And then I made these ones slightly tinier. I tried to keep them pretty true to the size in which they were in the original file. So as you can see here, we're a little over four and a half in width. And I'm gonna go ahead and get everything sent over to my maker. I'm going to have the Mama printed first on my HP inkjet printer. And then I'm gonna cover it with some clear JDC vinyl just to make sure I don't scratch any of the ink. All right, so I made sure to make a double set just in case I had a boo-boo. And I'm gonna go ahead and get my transfer tape. I just got one long enough that it fits the length of the bottle. And then what I did is I peeled off the sticker backing and I overlapped them at the bottom just so that they kind of were all seamlessly one unit. And as you can see right there, this is the longest you can go on this. This was pushed to the limits here, but it worked out perfectly. And I do have a clear layer of vinyl over the top just to make sure that I didn't smudge any of the ink. First, I'm gonna get these on, and then I'm gonna go back over and add some crystals to the glitter. All right, now it's time to add some rhinestones. I got my little pick-me-up guy. It has like this little sticky clay thing at the end. And what I did is I just intermittently put uh, my crystals in the clear and in the blue on alternating letters, and then I did blue on the others. And this came out really great. I loved it. I loved how it gave it a little bit of a shine and a little bit of glam. And then I epoxied it. Okay, y'all, this is where I messed up. And had I known this just three days earlier, I would not have done this. Don't do what I did and go over your rhinestones with epoxy. Why? Because it takes out their multifaceted look and it just makes them look flat. Taped my sides, added some glitter, went ahead with the plan. Brought it back in and decided, okay, 
We're gonna add some really nice uh, metallic coppered accents. I'm ready. Well, unfortunately, this turner has to go the other direction. Had we known that, it unscrewed itself and about halfway through the curing process, it stopped and it all glooped to the bottom, leaving us with a big mess. But I was able to save it, thankfully. All right, so we sanded this down and you can tell it did take a little bit off the bottom. Do a little bit of doctoring up and getting my glitter and getting this seamless and then getting the last coat of epoxy on it so that this thing will shine and be ready for my Christmas gift. It's definitely not perfect and flawless as I wanted it, but I do need to go back in and add some more gold accent strips just because the, sand, the sanding did take off a little bit. And so we're gonna go ahead and replace those. So I'll go over to Design Space and get those cut again. All right, on the turner, hopefully this is the last time. I did add some nice little hints of sparkle to this all black one. This is the second black one that I finished and I love it. It made it look like a midnight sky. Super excited for this one to finish carrying. And I decided since I still had the sparkles, I was gonna try it on this one as well. All right, now while those are carrying, I decided it was time to throw in a Christmas themed one. I did this really pretty matte glacier gray and white and did a really nice ombre. This is where I got my forest SVG bundle and I'll go ahead and leave a link down in the description. And I also grabbed my snowflakes from there as well. So I have two sets of trees. I have one that's a 10 by five by a four and a 10 by five by three. And then I just grabbed a couple of random snowflakes that I liked. I don't plan to use them all. I just wanted to have some options in deciding how I'm gonna do this cut. Now I do have them set in different colors because some are gonna be a stencil and then some are gonna actually be part of the cup. So right here you can see, I'm just going through a couple of my Creative Fabrica fonts that I really like. I've been going back and forth between a lot of my Christmas ones, but I finally decided that I was going to stick with the Glisten. I love this Glisten script in bold. And again, everything that I'm using, all of the fonts and images will be down in the links in the description box. So I decided that I wanted to have a offset behind this so that you can create your own outline. Now I like to go in there and actually change it myself. I don't always like their defaults. So there we go, 0 0.30. I went applied and then I went and I changed the background to a red just so that I can kind of see the glow behind it. So that's going to be my silver and then the be still in the regular darker font is going to be in a matte black vinyl. Go ahead and send these over to whatever machine you are using. They do fit through your Cricut Joy because you are keeping them under that four and a half in width. I did add a clear finish over the top just so that I could start doing some stenciling. I already got my words ready. I layered them over a silver metallic with the black matte vinyl. I grabbed my trees and my snowflakes, again, like I mentioned, over off of Creative Fabrica. Now, of course, since this uh, cup does have a smaller circumference at the bottom it does wrinkle a little bit but I use tape to tape off any of the access edges went over it with the regular white I let that dry and then I did the ombre opposite by adding the glacier gray at the top now go ahead and grab your Cricut tool and gently peel all your pieces I love how this came out unfortunately ugh, this guy decided to take a little bit of my paint off but that's okay I think I have a way to fix it Go ahead and take all your tape off. You want to start fresh. Everything looks beautiful. It looks like a snowy day. Absolutely love it. All right. I added a little bit of sparkle with my Mod Podge and then added some of my blue flakes, the Let's Resin Glitter Company. I'll go ahead and leave a link down below. Super pretty. I just wanted to give a little bit of color to this gray and white cup. Now I had some of my JDC holographic silver vinyl and I had cut out a bunch of random pieces and thankfully I had cut one similar to this one. So I was able to just overlap it and really make it a multifaceted snowflake. So this was actually a done and done. And then I also have my metallic silver. I wanted to give it kind of a, a very soft mute finish. I didn't want to have too much glitter on this cup. I'm going to have my be still right between those two painted white snowflakes. I'm gonna just pop those bubbles so that it's seamless. 
and now we are ready to add our bee still. I added in such a tad of this little white diamond just to give it little specks of shimmer. All right guys, so I had to show you water slide versus sticker paper. Now, this water slide was a hot mess. It gloops, it gets so wrinkled. It drove me crazy, especially for all of us perfectionists out there, so I scrapped it. Grabbed my JDC inkjet printable decal sticker paper in white and printed this amazing image that I got off of Creative Fabrica. I did cover it with some sealer so that I wouldn't smudge any of the ink while I was working with it and it worked amazing. I did three coats. As you see there, I cut the back end piece off, so about a half inch on each side. And I'm gonna save that for later because then now I can place this nice and evenly around the bottle and as it tapers, it's okay because I'm gonna take that piece that I cut and I'm going to apply it in the center. And what's nice about this material is that you can peel it back and reapply if you get any bubbles or any mistakes. So as you can see there, I'm just lining everything up and I added some nice silver metallic stripping along with the same color in my wording along the side. This looks absolutely amazing. Then I went and I grabbed some of my clear spray paint, sprayed that about two times, and then added my clear epoxy. While we're waiting for the epoxy to dry, let's go ahead and make an awesome shirt from the ultimate t-shirt bundle that I found over on Creative Fabrica. So I downloaded bundle part seven and that is all about firefighters. And I am picking the PNG or the SVG number 15. Now working with a toddler shirt, I usually like to keep um, my sizes around a five by six. So I'm gonna unlock my padlock and I'm gonna change this. This is a basic cut image. I'm wanting to go ahead and turn this to a really bright fiery red. And I'm actually going to be sending this as a print because we are gonna be doing a sublimation shirt today. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit print. I'm gonna go ahead and change the color and you can always change the color over in line type. You do wanna make sure that you do the following steps. I am going to make sure I attach it in the bottom right hand corner and then I'm going to flatten my image. This is really important when you are wanting to print an image. All right, so I have my image cut. I did not need my Cricut to cut it out just because we are doing a sublimation. I'm gonna go ahead and cut the rest of the border out. Now next, you wanna go ahead and make sure your t-shirt's nice and clean. I have a toddler shirt right here. I'm gonna go ahead and flip over my image and get it placed directly center. And then I'm gonna go ahead and use some of my heat resistant tape from JDC. I already have a few pre-cut off to the side. I'm gonna go ahead and grab those and get my image placed directly centered. Place the shirt on the mat. And just to avoid from bleeding, you wanna go ahead and take some cardstock. This is just regular thick cardstock. I'm gonna go ahead and place it directly inside the shirt. Go ahead and send it over to your heat press. Mine is set at 400 degrees. You want it to set for 60 seconds and then let it cool for another 60 seconds. And there we go. And you can also remove the cardboard as well. This came out great. Be sure to check out the Ultimate T-Shirt Bundle over off of Creative Fabrica. So this mug came out great. Now, I tried water slide. And I will tell you, that was just a hot mess and a handbasket. I'm not going to lie to you guys. I wanted to try it. I wanted to be able to give my experiences so that if you were thinking about sublimation, if you're thinking about water slide or even using sticker paper, I will tell you right now, sticker paper is the way to go because not a lot of us have all the tools needed to sublimate, much less pay for a sublimation printer. I didn't need a sublimation printer for this. I used my own regular HP DeskJet inkjet printer. This stuff is amazing. I can't wait to make more of these. I have more ideas for Christmas gifts and just for future tumblers. Now, something I do want to know, do not use the Cricut design settings to print these. Let me tell you why. It's because the print option is only going to give you six and a quarter by nine and a quarter or six and three quarters by nine and a quarter. 
So this is where my big issue is with that. So what I did was I took the PNG, I opened up the file itself and hit print. And when I opened up the dialog box, I'm going to hit landscape. This is super important because you want the length of it to be at that eight. And that is such a perfect measurement from the top to bottom of your tumbler, especially if you're using the skinny tumblers. Then you wanna scale it accordingly. As you can see here, I'm getting it scaled so that it's matching the length that I need. I'm going to have some access so that I'm gonna go ahead and measure that later and cut it off. I also added some accent stripping just to cover up the seams here. And this came out pretty flawless. products that I was using today from Hippie Crafter. I'll leave a link down below. And if you want to do some tumblers, check out this video. Do it again then. Okay. I didn't know what she was doing. I didn't know what she was doing. Okay. Add in a whole lot of extra words. Quit saying epoxy.